If there's any word that we love in our culture, in our society, more than the word love itself, because we love the word love, I think it's the word grow or growth. We want our, our bank accounts to grow. We want our portfolios to grow. We want the economy to grow. We want um, to grow healthy and strong. We want our churches to grow. Um, growth is like one of those words that we just love to talk about a lot, love to grow. Growth is good. Growth means life. Growth means um, a lot of things. So I'm going to take a few moments. I'm going to talk about um, what it means to grow as a believer. Pray with me for a minute. Lord, thank you for the scripture that Polly just read, and thank you for the work you did in the life of Paul and how you grew him and, and how uh, and he was, by the power of your Holy Spirit, was able to write it down and give it to us. And I thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. I pray, Lord, that the meditation of my lips and the words I'm about to speak, and the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in your sight, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. See, growth is, just means a lot of things. Growth, we mean, it's, to me, it means that, uh, that I'm feeding my children well. Um, it means they're growing healthy and, and happy. Last week, I talked about the importance of the, the kingdom and your role, and the church's role, and the advancement of that, of the kingdom of God, and, and inherent in that process is that the church of Jesus Christ is growing. And further still, God is, he is growing each one of us. He's growing us in our love, and our, in our devotion, and our allegiance to him who is our king. We are allowing God to be in charge of our life because the definition of the kingdom of God was is that the kingdom is wherever God is in charge. So we read, the, um, Polly just read the fourth chapter of Paul's letter. She read the um, New Living Translation. I'm going I'm to give you the key verse that I want to hone in on. So if you have it opened, Ephesians 4.15 it says this in the ESV. It says, rather speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up. Her version said fully grown. We are to grow up in every way into Him who is the head into Christ. So we are to grow up. Growing up is a good thing. Unless, of course, someone looks at you and says, grow up. You know, that, that's not a good thing. <laughs> But we are to grow up into every way, as the verse says. Does it say are we are to grow up into every way into a, a healthy person? Does it say grow up into a smart person? Does it grow up? Does it say grow up into, into a, an intelligent person, a, a, um, a, an emotionally intelligent person? Grow up into every way into a rich person? No, it, it says grow up into, in every way into him that who is the head, the head, that, that the king, into Christ. Grow up not into a Christ, not in, uh, Christ means king, if you didn't know that, uh, but into the full likeness of Jesus Christ. So how do we do that? In the little bit of time that I have, Let's, um, I'm going to take a look at what I believe are five stages of, of growth as a believer, as a follower of Jesus Christ. Now these are just kind of five arbitrary things to sort of put it in, all in a nice, neat little package. This isn't a five-step plan. This isn't a, um, if you do these five things, and, and this isn't necessarily what uh, Scripture says is the five stages, but I think it makes for a good outline. But this is five stages of what growth looks like for a believer in Jesus Christ. The first stage might not seem like growth at all. It, it, in fact, it really isn't growth. You know, we just saw this amazing spectacle a couple of weeks ago. We saw where, where the moon moved right in front of the sun. Right? Y'all see it? The, the solar eclipse. 
However, when you really, when you really think about what the moon is, the moon is it's just a rock. It's just a big, big rock in space. It's, it's really a, just a desert in the sky, right? Uh, astronauts, they've visited it. And uh, don't dispute that with me, because I really believe they did. Um, they brought stuff back. And they visited it a few times, and, and it's almost like they haven't really done that in you know, over 40 years now. And, and so it's almost like they said, well, well, that was fun. There's not really much there. It's just a rock. Why? Because a rock is dead. They went, and there really wasn't much there uh, other than the fact that it's cool. But it is a desert. It's void of life. And so growth happens when... Um, it go, happens in our lives, but particularly in a life of a plant. Or, but it happens when something outside of itself nourishes it. It's not happening on the moon. Because there's no water. There's very little air. There's nothing on the moon to support life. But that's how growth happens. When you think about how you grow physically, things on the outside of you help nourish you. So plants, they need water and soil. People, they need food and water. And, you know, and the other things, too, are important. Those are the basics. But you know, people need caregivers, and they need community, and the other things. But the basics is that people need food and water. Plants need soil, water, air, sunlight. I, I know that my kids are going through a growth spurt because they start to eat us out of house and home. Um, so that's just a sign that's like, okay, they're growing. Yep, all right. You know, Ezra's so hungry lately, and he's growing. He's growing. When life uh, doesn't get food or water or life, I mean, or light, what happens is it dies. When something is dead, it doesn't grow. And you could plant a seed on the moon if you'd like. And you can wait 50 years and nothing will happen. I actually Googled to see if they did that, but I couldn't find anything. Because so, it's been about 50 years since the moon. I'm like, are they monitoring a plant up there maybe? But no, no, I don't think. Nothing's happening up there. Now I want you to listen real close for a second. God has given each one of us life. Apart from him, we have no life. I want you to close your eyes for a second. Don't fall asleep, please. But close your eyes for a second, and I want you to just place your hand on your heart. And be quiet and still. And I want you to listen. Listen to your heartbeat. Listen to yourself breathing. Our hearts beat because God made it. Our lungs breathe because he allowed it. We think because God, he first dreamed us up first. And he made our brains to dream stuff too. You can uh, open your eyes. You can keep your hand up your heart if you want. But All of those awesome things is what keep us alive in our spirit. But sadly, when those who have chosen to live apart from God, who choose to ignore Him. The Bible just it says that we are spiritually dead because they ignore the giver of life, the one who's given you all those things. So the first stage of growth, even though it doesn't seem like growth at all, and it's, but it's an important part of our stage as believers, is that you have to recognize that apart from Christ, you are spiritually dead. If you're dead, you can't grow. Life happens apart from our, if life happens apart from ourselves and God gave us our life and our bodies, he also has the power over life and death. Because he is the giver of life. I know this because his word, it says that in, um, there's a story in the book of Ezekiel, the prophet Ezekiel. And uh, it said that he told Ezekiel to go to this giant valley of dry bones. And he told him to speak to those bones. And 
those bones would come alive. And they did. And I believe that happened. And I believe also that um, when Jesus, he uh, went to the tomb of a friend of his by the name of Lazarus, he just died. And Jesus looks into the tomb and he speaks to his friend to come out. And Lazarus, who was dead, came out alive. Because if dead things don't grow, God needs to breathe new life into it. And he did into the life of Lazarus because Lazarus had some more growing to do. And it doesn't say in Scripture, but um, good history says that Lazarus may have gone on to become a pastor and lived a full life. That's the part we don't often hear about is that Lazarus did live a full life. And so Lazarus had some more growing to do. God who created all life keeps life going and controls everything. So did God give us our lives so that we can just, did he give it to us just so we can do whatever we want and just say, hey, thanks for the life, God. I'm going to go do what I want with it. No. He wants us to run to him, to follow him, the giver of life who created this whole earth and this whole galaxy. Even the moon. And we walk away from God. When we walk away from God and live the way we want, it's sin. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father, the Father, the giver of all life, except through him. That's what Jesus said. And so today you have a choice. If God's been pressing on your heart, knocking on your door, and you haven't given, made that choice to follow him. The choice that you have today is life. And it's the beginning of growth. And it says this in John 5.24. It says, Truly, truly, I say to you, or however I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes in him who has sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but ha has passed from death to life. And 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old has passed away, but the new has come. Life. So in Christ you have new life. It's your choice to accept that grace. And it is a choice. I believe this. It says in Deuteronomy 30, that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Therefore, choose life that you, you and your offspring, your children, just like what we saw today, may live loving the Lord your God, obeying his voice, holding fast to him, for he is your life in length of days. That's the choice that you make. And you choose Jesus with your whole life. And it's just one small step that you've got to make. Just a small step that each one of us takes. It's a small step that Jesus compares to a seed. Seeds are small, right? Amen? Jesus compares faith to that small seed. Matthew 17, 20. He replied, Jesus replied, Because you have so little faith, truly I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, just a tiny the seed that grows to about 10 feet tall, a plant. I can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it'll move. Nothing will be impossible for you. Nothing. Man, Jesus is saying that faith as little as a seed can make growth happen so big and do these incredible things. Oh, the word, elsewhere in Scripture, it says that all things are possible. With that kind of faith. Now, does it mean that all things mean that you can just fly like a superhero or, you know, knock over a, a mountain? No, it means that you have faith enough. When you have faith enough to follow Christ, you can do all the things that Jesus does. And I know that's just, like, crazy to think about. But we just went through the entire book of Acts where I think it demonstrates how followers of Christ can do the things that Jesus does. 
So the, if the first stage of growth is being spiritually dead and recognizing that you can pass from death to life, but once you've made that small step and you have that seed, the next step is becoming a, a spiritual baby. Our gospel reading for today was the parable of the sower. Jesus, he highlights four parables. And the soil, I believe, is analogous to food in our life. Like, it's like food for plants. We have spiritual food, which is the Word of God. Also called the bread of life. We even sang about it today. So when Jesus describes the four uh, soils in that parable, he's asking you, how have you planted that small seed that you have given that can do these amazing, amazing things? He's asking you if, if you are planted on the dry, packed road soil, are, are, you, are you beaten down by life? Are you rolled over by the bad things that are happening with you? Have you been walked over by people so much that you can't hear that message of Jesus so well? Or you want to have more faith, but life just gets hard and, and, and you give up. Or maybe you're that rocky soil that Jesus was talking about, and your life isn't really that deep. And, you, and you, you're just giving right answers to people, or your pastors maybe, and, um, and they're just giving them what they want to hear. And you're coming to church looking good maybe, but you, know, you have no roots. Because... Your heart is hard, like rocky soil. Or maybe you're that thorny soil where, where lots of uh, things are grabbing at your attention. And um, maybe you've settled for what's right in front of you or what your friends are doing and what maybe the latest popular things are instead of standing strong for Jesus. Or maybe the last soil where you're a good soil, and you've allowed Jesus to prepare that soil, and prepare your heart free of distraction um, so that your, your life can prepare a steady growth as a, becoming a front, strong follower of Jesus. It's so important to recognize that as a spiritual baby at this stage, this small step that maybe you've taken recently or maybe you've had a long season where I made that step a while ago and I don't know, I just, I've, I've been, it's been stretching out. It's okay. But your roots need to be planted firm in soil, good soil, the food, good, the word of God. So God is starting to grow you he can start to grow you. And once he starts growing you, what now? So if you're a plant, you start to branch out, okay? You all seen a little shoot? I actually have some in the church because I've been doing the similar teaching with some of the youth and they planted seeds last week. So maybe I'll grab them and I'll put them out in Robertson Hall. Is that, you know, the little, the, the plant, a baby plant starts to grow a shoot. But then that starts to branch out to capture sunlight and so maybe you need to be intentionally seeking light in your life, other believers, to reflect the grace and love of, and mercy of Jesus Christ. Just like a plant needs to reach out to the sun. Baby plants and even, even human babies, they get thirsty. If you're drinking in Jesus every day in daily prayer, meditation on him, taking in that living water, you'll net... His word promises that you'll, you'll never be thirsty again like he promised the woman at the well. I also see worship as sort of that, you know, like getting a, a drink of Jesus every week when you sing and praise him. Dead things don't grow, but planted seeds bring new life. So the new plants must grow taller and stronger and babies, they start to grow into toddlers and children. So the next stage I see, if the uh, first stage is spiritually dead and then become a spiritual baby, the next stage I see is that we become spiritual children. And remember, our growth isn't just spiritual growth, but growing into every way the head who is in Christ, to becoming like Christ. So if, you're, if, you're being, if being spiritually dead means no life and being a spiritual baby means 
um, this new life, then at this stage of growth, it means that you become like a child and you start to walk, whereas plants branch out, and you, we start to walk in this faith of ours. We start to branch out in our faith and, and, uh, and, to, and really put some shoes of the gospel, as they say, onto what God is doing in your life and what it means to follow him. You know, when Jen and I, when we bring our kids to the store or we go out somewhere where they, they get out of the car and there's a busy parking lot or even on a street um, or maybe there's a big crowd, we don't just let our kids go and do whatever they want. You know, we don't let them just like, hey, go run in the parking lot, go play in traffic. No, we don't do that. Because, you know, no, we're not the best parents, but I think good parents um, don't do that with their kids. They ask their kids to follow them and, and stay close. Good child, a good parent wants that for their children. Jesus wants you, as the good, good father, he wants you to follow him like that. Part of growing up means following Christ and walking with him. So when you walk this faith in Christ, you start to learn what it means to trust and trust him with your life, with your everyday decisions, with putting him in charge. And, and you start to ask questions like, is this thing that I'm doing, whatever that thing is, you insert it, is this, is this what would make God happy? Sometimes walking with Jesus is, is hard because, you know, we all go back to what we want to do and doing our own thing. We turn to our own ways instead of recognizing that he's the way, the truth, and the life. And that's sin. And sin is what happens when you turn from God and follow your own ways. You miss the mark of what God's intended for your life to live free, to love him and love others. And sin just makes your heart hard like it did with Pharaoh. And if you, if you ever read the account in Exodus, it's like that rocky soil. And hard hearts are, are just like stones, and stones are hard. And stones, guess what, are dead. Dead things don't grow. Planted seeds bring life, but growing plants branch out or they walk. Plants branch out for more sun, and people grow. As they grow, they learn what it means to walk and walk spiritually with their Savior. Our faith must branch out and walk closer to Jesus. But some of you, maybe some of you are not free yet. And you need to be free. And that freedom comes from first knowing that no matter how hard you try to follow Jesus, you're going to mess up. It happens to me over and over. And he he is not going to, and he's going to love you. He's going to love you no matter what when you do mess up. Because the work of that Jesus did on the cross has paid for all the penalty for all of us and every wrong thing we've ever done. All the wrong things that we've done that messes up our following him. And you don't need to dwell on it anymore. You don't need to beat yourself up and walk away from Jesus. All you need to do is take the hand of the Savior who is reaching out and saying, I saw that you fell. I'm going to help you up. I saw that you fell on the ground and you stumbled and it's okay. And you just reach for that hand and you let him pull you up. Because that's what a good father does when his ch child falls. Just doesn't let them sit there and wallow it helps him up. And when you walk, know that Jesus is ha what he's having you walk toward. Micah 6.8 says this. It says, he has told you what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. So as you grow more, your roots are going to grow stronger in grace, in the grace of love of Jesus Christ. And when you feed on his word and walk humbly with your God, he's going to eventually start to grow you even more into what I call a spiritual young adult.
because we all don't want to be real adults and old adults. You just want to stay young adults, right? So that's where you're going to stay. Not really, but. So this growing up in your faith to the point where you recognize how much Jesus has done in your life. You, you, you know it in the life of others. And you see it, and you see the work that he's doing. But that love has to compel you to do something. That your knowledge of the Lord has grown by, it's grown by reading his word and, and talking to him and spending time with other believers and seeing what he has done and knowing what he has done, and you, and you are sure of it. So if dead things don't grow, and planted seeds bring new life, and growing plants branch out, then at this stage, being a, a, a spiritual young adult, you're, you've become this grown plant. And, and God's not done with you yet. And, you, and you've grown to the point where, like a plant, you're giving fruit. Like an apple tree. You drop, you know, you're giving out fruit. Grown plants give fruit. So what does it mean to give fruit? Fruit means to, it literally means you can feed people with it. But spiritually, it means you're giving life to others. You're blessing others. As a follower of Jesus and growing up in Him, you should be blessing people, making them more important than yourselves. Giving them back their dignity, honor, respect, and adoration. Blessing the world means that, like, like I said last week, it means that you're advancing God's kingdom and bringing heaven here on earth. We do this by growing up to become in every way him who is the head, the king, that is Christ. To grow into Christ and to serve like Christ, you have to humble yourself and sacrifice yourself like Christ did. He showed you what it means to bless other people and to, to make them a little more important than yourselves. And Jesus did this one, he, he did this one thing uh, with his disciples the night before he died. He ate a meal with them just like we did today. Um, not just like, I'm sure it was a real, like full meal, like we do every Wednesdays. But he showed them what it means to love other people in this simple way. He washed their dirty, disgusting feet. Like 2,000 years ago feet, which, you know, they didn't have nice shoes then, and their roads weren't that clean. It was a gross job, and it was left for lowly servants, but Jesus says, he said to, he's he says to us to wash other people's feet, to take that lowly, disgusting job that we don't want to do. He wants you to serve others and love others in that way. He wants you to bless other people in that way. And that's what it means to give fruit. This giving the fruit of other, for others as followers of Jesus and to re, in response to the love that he has shown you is to give to others, to love others, because that's fruit. And fruit carries seeds. Literally, right? That's what the purpose of a fruit is. So, well, I mean, to feed and to give off a seed. So the seeds of faith that God uses you to work and love others and in the lives of other people, that spiritual fruit, fruit literally and spiritually plants seeds in the life of other people. So that when you demonstrate Christ, when you proclaim the love of Christ, that's giving off fruit. That's giving life, the life, the way, the truth, and the life of Jesus Christ and other people as you get to that point in your growth. So when you get to that point where you're actually literally giving out seeds, you've moved from being what I say is a young, a spiritual young adult to now a spiritual parent. You get to the part of where you're reproducing that faith in the lives of others. The fruit of showing your faith and telling others of your faith now gets you to a point where you can invite others, planting seeds in the lives of others, in that faith. Growth as a believer should compel you to bring the good news to your friends, your family, your neighborhood, the town that you live in, and to the ends of the earth, just as we have read multiple times in Acts. 
Matthew 28, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always to the end of age. That's what it means to plant a seed of fruit in the life of somebody else, is that you become, have the opportunity to reproduce that faith, that God's going to use you to do that. So if dead things don't grow, and planted seeds bring new life, and growing plants branch out or walk, and grown plants give fruit, then fruit plants seeds. And so it begins again, and it's like a cycle that God does with each one of us sitting here as followers of Jesus. Now this, I said before, this is not a five-step plan on how to grow as a believer, but there is no steps that you need to take other than to submit yourself to Christ and allow Him to grow you. And as I said last week, don't quench the spirit of what God is going to do with you. And growth like this, unlike us in our physical bodies where it takes 80, 100 years to grow, it doesn't have a timeline. And God's going to work with some quicker than others. And, um, but when you're a sinner saved by grace, you have moved from death to life. It could spring up quick and move towards showing your faith. And I'm not just like, not just like, you know, shallow roots quick, but like deep roots quick. God can do that in your life. But for others, it may just be a little slower than that. But he's telling you to advance the kingdom of God. And he wants you to do that. And that's okay. The point is, is growing up into him who is the head, that is in Christ. It doesn't mean if God's working with you slower and you're growing slower that God's not with you. He is. And he will grow you. You just need to let him and not walk away. Let him feed your soul with the richness of God's words word. Let it, let, you know, draw from the well of that living water in worship and, and in thanks and in praise. Surround yourself with the light of the world, the, his church and people who are committed to his kingdom. Don't settle. Don't settle for anything else because the goal is to grow up into every way that is him who is the head, the king that is in Christ. That, that is how we grow. Amen. Amen.